Hey, it's Will from LearnRator, and in this edition of AP Micro Mondays, we're going to walk through negative externalities. So last week we covered positive externalities, so let's go ahead and cover the opposite of that, which is negative externalities. So as you can imagine, negative externalities are situations in which we have a third party that gets some overall cost that we're not initially considering. So an example that is often cited in the actual AP exam are fireworks. So if people are putting out fireworks, a lot of people get enjoyment out of it, but there's also a negative externality in the sense that these fireworks are really loud and they cause a great disruption in the overall noise levels of a surrounding neighborhood. So there's an overall spillover cost that occurs from fireworks being released. So when you think about negative externalities, what you want to think about is a situation in which our marginal social cost is greater than our marginal social benefit. So what this is saying is that the overall cost to society is greater than the overall benefit to society. So now let's look at this in the form of a graph. So in this case, we have our price on our Y and our Q, our quantity on our X. And what we normally have is we have this marginal private and marginal social benefit. So this marginal social benefit curve is going to be the same as the marginal private benefit curve, but essentially in this case, this marginal social benefit is showing us how much of an overall gain a overall event has on us. So in other words, if the price is really high, then naturally there's not going to be that many people demanding this as a society. And if the price is really low, then naturally people are going to want more of this. So this is a perfect example of a normal good because if prices are low and, and, and the desire of quantity demand goes up, then, you know, then this would be at a point much lower here and with, with respect to this curve. However, if the price were high and the quantity were low, then you know people want less of it. So that makes sense. That's typical consumer behavior with a normal good. So now let's think about it from the perspective of the marginal private cost as well as the marginal social cost. So in this case, we might have a marginal private cost that looks like this. And what the negative externality tells us is that there's some additional cost that we're not keeping in mind. So this would be a situation in which we have a marginal social cost to the left of the marginal private cost. And so this makes sense because intuitively what this is saying is that our overall cost structure is actually higher than we originally thought it was. So now we can actually trace the intersections of these points and see where the original equilibrium price is and where the new one is with this overall consideration to the society. So in this case, Q0 is going to be here. And then P0 is going to be here. And then if we look at this intersection, this gives us P1, and then this gives us Q1. So what we see here is that the negative externality has led to an increase in price. However, it's led to a decrease in the quantity. And that makes sense because on a societal level, there is too much that is currently being supplied in the market versus how much society actually wants. So what this is saying is that there's this negative externality force that's in effect, in which our marginal social cost at that original equilibrium is actually greater than our marginal social benefit. And you can witness this gap by tracing upwards to the marginal social cost curve at the original equilibrium and seeing that indeed the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal social benefit. And therefore, we have a deadweight loss that occurs as a result of this. And that happens right here. So if I switch my color to red, I can highlight this and essentially show you that as a result of marginal social cost exceeding marginal social benefit, we have this deadweight loss that occurs here. So you might be asking right now, how do we resolve this issue of this deadweight loss? How do we get closer? to the overall marginal social cost. Well, in order to do this, a lot of times what governments do is they implement either Pigouvian taxes or taxes in general. So what they'll do is essentially tax the producers so that they reduce the overall quantity that they're supplying. So in order to get this upward shift in the overall marginal social you know, cost to, to match the marginal private cost, we can just impose a tax. And what this tax will do is it'll force that upward shift so that we're closer to the actual marginal social cost curve. So nuts and bolts of negative externalities, we have this overall cost that we're not taking into consideration, which leads us to have a marginal social cost that's greater than our marginal social benefit. And as a result of this, it yields a deadweight loss, which we can then resolve through a tax. So that pretty much covers it for this week. As always, if you have any questions, check out our other videos, and I will see you guys next week.